Okay. So if you work in public education, K through 12, community college or higher ed, would you please stand up? Awesome, thank you. If you work for a faith-based or nonprofit organization, would you please stand up? Great. Awesome. If you're a student, would you please stand up? Great. Thank you. And if you're here on behalf of a private employer, business, or industry, would you please stand up? Great. So the reason I did that, and those that know me well won't be surprised by this, you're all going to have homework. Okay? Everybody today will leave with an assignment. So I want to tell a story. When the event organizers asked me to be here, they said, we're going to put you last because we want you to tell a story, and we want you to weave all the stories you've heard today into your story. So I wanted to start with a couple of questions. So what if you ran a business and you had what you thought were unlimited resources and one day you find out that those resources would no longer be available to you? And what if you knew that in the next five years you would lose 25% of the current critical resources that you had? Would you be scared? So I want to show you our most critical resources at Siemens in Charlotte. It's our people. And our people are really smart and really talented and very highly skilled. You see, we have robots and we have lasers and we have computer numeric control machines. And they don't run themselves, so we have to rely on our people to do that for us. We've got a pretty diverse population at Siemens. But our population today looks quite differently than it looked two years ago. For those of you who know anything about our company, we're a global multinational organization. We have over 600,000 employees worldwide, crossing many divisions from medical to energy to computer um, software. We do, we do nearly everything. We make telephones. We provide trains. So in 2010, Siemens Charlotte had about 750 employees, and at that time, we made generators and steam turbines for the power industry. Now, we have a legacy workforce, and what that means is people come to work for us and they never leave. Now, that's a great problem to have, isn't it? We currently have less than a 2% turnover rate. My husband heard me say that yesterday, and he said, that can't be true. I said, it's the truth. Two years ago, our legacy workforce, we, we had 40% of our employees who could walk away and retire if they wanted to. Is that good or bad? It's a little bit scary. So in March of 2010, Siemens AG, which is our big corporate headquarters, announced a, um, an addition to the Charlotte facility. They told us that we were going to add 450,000 square feet of manufacturing space, which would give us ultimately 1 million square feet of factory. And that in 14 months, we would hire 750 new people and that we would relocate the gas turbine product line from Hamilton, Ontario to Charlotte. So we would make something we've never made before. And in October of 2010, they hired me. I came from the community college system. And I was tasked with being um, the architect of the campus training program. They had not had a training manager for about seven years at that time. And so I had a lot of work that I had to do. And one of the things they tasked me with was to build an apprenticeship training program. Well, I was in love with that idea because one of the things you don't know about me is I'm also a full-time student at NC State. And I'm in the third year of my doctorate. And my area of research interest is career technical education and apprenticeship training. That's what I'm writing my dissertation on. And so I got to very quickly travel to Berlin, Germany, and to Mülheim, where we have over 1,400 people in an apprenticeship training program. They're in apprenticeship training programs from everything from welding to computer IT. 
So in the last 16 months, we've heard 752 people. It's taken our campus to a size of 1,500. The good thing about that is now our retirement eligibility rate has dropped to 25%. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. And so in April of last year, we joined Apprenticeship 2000. How many of you have heard of it? It's a regional area partnership. If you'll notice, mostly European country companies, okay, a few American companies up there. So we joined Apprenticeship 2000 last year because they had a very well established program through Central Piedmont Community College in the Mechatronics Engineering uh, Technologies degree. And we knew that we could get up and running pretty quickly. So my friend Bill Dillon, who's out there somewhere, he works for Central Piedmont Community College. He invited me to a luncheon at the Arrowwood Business Association meeting. He said, I got a guy you have to meet. So we went and we had lunch and I ended up sitting right beside Mike Raylon, my partner in crime. Because Bill knew that Mike had the resources I needed and that was access to good kids. So Mike and I very quickly established a relationship and we got really excited about creating an apprenticeship training program. I want to remind you that Olympic is a community of schools. It's not a magnet school. So some of the things that they're doing at Olympic are pretty darn remarkable. So we started a screening process, Mike and I. I went out to Olympic, I talked to the kids. Mike talked to the kids. We started uh, getting their high school transcripts. I was flying back to Germany in May. I was on the airplane with a stack of high school transcripts. And I started screening them, and I started looking for high math scores, good overall grade point average, something that's really important to us at Siemens is attendance. So if I saw that a kid had bad attendance in high school, they went into the no pile. So we very quickly screened that group of kids down, and then we invited the ones who were in the yes and the maybe pile in, and we made them bring their parents. And while they were there, we took them out into the factory because I have to tell you, a million square feet of manufacturing space and overhead cranes that lift 800 tons are pretty formidable. So we made, we made the, the parents come, we took the kids out in the factory and they couldn't believe what they saw. They couldn't believe that every piece of machinery that we have is run by a computer. They couldn't believe that we had robots, we had laser cutters, we had laser welders. They were so impressed. And so last summer, we invited these kids to a summer internship for six weeks in the factory, really just to see if they liked us and if we liked them. Because honestly, it's not for everybody, and we knew that. So in August of last year, we added six apprentices. Now, I'll, I just want to talk about these kids for a minute. You'll notice that they're a pretty diverse group. Four males, two females, Five speak English as a second language. We didn't do that on purpose, it just happened that way. I brought with me today the Pathways to Prosperity Report, and this is a, an article that was written by the Harvard Graduate School of Education in February of 2011. And you know what they call these kids in that report? The forgotten half. Because half of our high school students will graduate they will have no job skill, and they will not have the means to go to college. The forgotten half. So we made a business decision that we were going to spend $170,000 per student over a three and a half period of time. That's, that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? <laughs> These kids are high school seniors at Olympic this year. They go to high school in the morning. And at 11 o'clock, they leave. And they either come to Central Piedmont Community College two days a week, or they come to Siemens. And at Siemens, we've assigned them a machining mentor. And this is an older legacy worker who is assigned for their education and to teach them everything that they know about running those machines. I call them my kids. I hope their parents don't mind. They're a pretty remarkable bunch of kids, really. They make really good grades overall. They're at work every day. 
And I have to tell you that two of these kids, oh, and by the way, I pay them 40 hours a week. Did I mention that? <laughs> two of these kids are paying the bills for their families because their parents are unemployed. That's a remarkable story. So this year, we've taken about 68 kids through the Apprenticeship 2000 screening process, the whole partnership. And actually today, I couldn't be at the, the choosing ceremony, so I sent someone in my place to pick the kids that I had my eye on. I want to say Central Piedmont Community College has been an awesome partner for us. They actually develop classes just for my kids. So if I want a special class for them, they never tell me no. We added a second shift in February, and guess what? We have a shortage of qualified machinists. We can't find them. I was in Clemson three weeks ago, and I picked up the Greenville News on Sunday. And in the paper, I saw not only is it a sh Charlotte area shortage, there's a regional shortage. There were six ads in the Greenville News for computer, computer numeric control machinists. Companies like GE, Rex Roth Bosch, ZF Lumforder, Baldor Electric, all looking for qualified, skilled machinists. BMW just announced an expansion in the Greenville area of 700 skilled workers. So we've made another business decision this year. We're going to add 10 more, 10 more apprentices, six as machinists and four in our maintenance integrated systems technology degree at Central Piedmont Community College. The total investment overall for these young people will be $2.7 million. Can you repeat after me, $2.7 million? <laughs> but I want to spend a minute and talk about community involvement, because you've heard about that all day. We've developed a coalition of industry and educational partners, and they're all up here. We want more. So if you're out there and you want to get involved, you just let me know. And we've decided that we're going to put together a two-week summer camp for 25 Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools teachers who are STEM teachers. Because we feel like these teachers need to know what jobs are out there so that they can change their language in the classroom. We're going to spend... Um, a lot of time teaching them about different kinds of energy. An additional thing that we're doing with Olympic is we've created an energy academy. And the energy companies have agreed to serve on the advisory board of that energy academy at Olympic High School. So we can start talking to these students about energy careers. We also know that it takes about 10 days of an experience to change a teacher's teaching in the classroom. So we're going to rotate these 25 STEM teachers they're going to start at Central Piedmont Community College and they're going to spend a day in the machining lab and a day in the mechatronics lab. And then they're going to come to Siemens for three days because I have enough to keep them busy for three days. And then we're going to send them to the other companies, to Piedmont Natural Gas, to Livingston and Haven, to FAF Molds, to Arriva. And they are actually going to spend some time at Discovery Place and Coca-Cola. Discovery Place is offered to give them all uh, a free membership to Discovery Place. They'll get paid for their experience, and we're working on stipends for the teachers. We will also give them lesson plans that they can take back into the classroom so that they have real live lessons that reflect the jobs that are out there in the Charlotte community. We're also working with Charlotte Bridge Home. And this is a veterans organization, if you don't know very much about them. They help veterans get reacclimated to the local business community. And so we're going to focus on the veterans to put them into our maintenance uh, integrated Systems Technology Program. So whose responsibility is it? We've heard a lot of people today say a lot of different things. And my philosophy is we're not allowed to complain about it if we're not willing to be part of the solution. Industry partners can't sit on the sideline and complain about public education unless we're willing to get in there and roll our sleeves up and help. We've opened our factory to public education. We have teachers coming in and out of our shop all the time now. We also have put together a group called Siemens Caring Hands, which is a philanthropic group. And they go out into the local community and they're focusing on middle schools. And they take science kits that are all energy experiments. 
there are alternatives of four-year degrees. Everyone does not have to have a four-year degree to be employable. These kids will make twice as much as a public school teacher. Ironically, with Mike Raylon's help yesterday, I met with two young men who are college dropouts, real smart kids, maxed out their SAT math scores. One went to NC State and one went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And guess why they wanted to meet with me? Because they want to get in the apprenticeship training program. A third one has a four-year degree from Chapel Hill in sociology, and he can't find a job. And he wants to know if he can come spend the summer with me and potentially get into the apprenticeship training program. We've got to really look at non-traditional approaches to a skilled workforce. We're in trouble. If we don't start doing something differently, we won't have the people to replace all those legacy workers that will start retiring when the economy improves. So it's time to think outside of the box. And you got to see India Gregory. She spent last summer with me at Siemens. I wanted her to fall in love with Siemens. So when she goes to NC State and gets her engineering degree, she comes back to Siemens as an engineer. Our apprentices are our renewable resources. India Gregory is a renewable resource. And I have to tell you that working at Siemens, which is a Fortune 100 company, number 40 on the list this year, changes families. So here's my call to action, and here's another what if question. What if every person in this room walked away and did one thing to improve public education? If you're a public educator, go find an industry partner. If you're an industry partner, open yourself to a work-based learning opportunity. I can guarantee you, if you call Mike Graylon, he can have 12 kids in your company tomorrow. Students, go find an internship. Go find a place to work and learn what real work is about. Volunteer. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tomorrow I'm going to go back to my office and offer apprenticeship to six more young people. Thank you.